Fortnite squad. There's no doubt that Mongra and Booga are both remarkably talented players. Ever since exploding into the Fortnite scene, man, these guys have developed fame, found terrific success, and have managed to hold into their positions at the very top. Both these guys have highly affected playstyles and possess unbelievable, unbelievable amounts of skill. So, unsurprisingly, anytime the grades are brought up, you're gonna hear their names. What's going on, guys? It's the motivation guy. That's right, your friend. The it is going down when I connect with you, all right? So today, I'm bringing you another comparison video. This time, we're gonna be squaring off FaZe Clan's Mongrel against Team Sentinel's Booga. To decide who's better, I'm gonna be going through five different categories, mechanics, solo play, team play, game sense, and you already know, the clutch factor. We're gonna be handing out between one to 10 pro guys points per group to each player for their overall skill and impressiveness. And toward the end, we're gonna tally all these results together to find out who's superior, Mongrel or Booga. Of course, of course, you know, we love to hear your thoughts, all right, so feel free to drop your answer as to who you think wins this match up down below. All right, guys, it's time to sit back, relax, and get my favorite candy. Come on now, what's my favorite candy? Say it out loud. There you go. That bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. Okay, 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 so mechanics are up first. Who's the better builder? And what about aiming? Can't forget about that little important thing. Well, when it comes to building, Mongrel and Booga are very similar to each other, both in skill level and style. Mongrel's one of those fast and flashy builders you have to watch at half speed just to follow along. You're like, what is he doing? He's very technical, and he seems to always be at the forefront when it comes to perfecting new techniques. You all know him for his box fighting skills, you know, rapid 90s, and some of the fastest tunneling out there. Booga's building is pretty identical. He only defers ever so slightly, mainly that he seems more controlled than Mongrel. Pieces are placed more deliberately, and he knows how to make the building grid system work for him. Now, their aim is where we notice a little bit more of a difference. No doubt, Booga's fantastic, he's great, I love him, but uh, he seems to rarely miss a shotgun blast. If he weren't a top tier aimer, he wouldn't even be where he is today. Same thing with Mongrel, his flicks are so on point, man, considering how quick they are when it comes to close range firefights, both these players are dominant forces. But my friends, when it comes to long range tracking, Mongrel seems to be a little bit like above Booga. Not by a whole lot or anything like that, but uh, Booga's aim is cracked too, but he seems to have these rare off moments that come, you know, where he just whips shots he should have hit. And Mongrel's literally one of the sharpest shooters we've ever seen. Maybe it's his lower sensitivity or maybe he just spends more time training in it, but either way, Mongrel's absolutely deadly with a rifle in his hands. We consider Mongrel and Booga's building to be pretty much on the same level of effectiveness. And since Mongrel's got that superior tier aim, we're gonna end this category by giving Mongrel 10 points and Booga 9. Okay, okay, so this next category is solo play. How well do Mongrel and Booga perform when left to their own devices? You can probably guess right now who's gonna be at the top, but let's just go through it anyway. What we've noticed about Mongrel in recent solo events is that he shows no respect to his opponents. And we're not saying that in a negative way or anything like that, but what we mean is that he's not afraid to treat his opponents like they are like worse than him. He'll make crazy pushes and he'll take storm fights. Like it's no big deal because he knows he's gonna get the kills. A massive part of being successful in solos, guys, has to do with mechanical skills. And as we just discussed, Mongrel has that in large quantities. So by treating his opponents like they're trash, which sucks, but to them anyway, <laughs> he can go in with confidence and absolutely dumpster all over them. However, we have to note that Mongrel sometimes lets bad moments get to him a little bit. When he's chilling with his squad, you know, he seems to play a lot more reasonably. But in solos, man, there's no doubt that his emotion sometimes gets the better of him. And that's understandable. I get it. Happens to me every time I play. <laughs> Serious solo events are beyond frustrating. I get it. But being able to move past those annoying deaths and back to peak performance, you know, that's a skill in itself that's just often undervalued. Now, Booga, on the other hand, all right, obviously, we all know him from the World Cup, all right? He finished first during the first week of qualifiers to earn a spot, then went on to decisively win the entire thing. Since that moment, he's placed first in two online cash cups, second on one occasion, and has gotten a few more great results here and there. Why is Booga so good in solos? That is the question. There's nothing we can point to exactly. He just sort of has the complete package. He rarely, if ever, tilts. 
every decision he seems to make correctly. And so he's mechanically inclined and he can push for kills whenever he needs to. He was doing that a lot during the World Cup. He wasn't forcing any battles or anything like that, but when the situation was like really bad, he would manage to snag a kill or two and recover. The key here was patience. Booga didn't ever overcommit for any kills. Even if his loadout was garbage, you know, he still used what he had and only went in what he needed. And this patient playstyle worked wonders for this guy. So, we said you could probably guess who's coming in on top here, alright, you don't have to be a genius to get this one. Booga, the solo World Cup guy, hasn't just fallen off, alright. His performance and gameplay are still unbelievable. We gotta give this one to him. 8 points for Mongrel and 10 for your guy, Booga. Alright, so, next. Let's take a look at their team play. In contrast to solos, team-based modes require some specific skills to be successful, like excellent communication, proper positioning, and knowing how to execute plays with your team. So how do your boys do here? Well, neither of these guys are inexperienced when it comes to these skills. Mongo's been playing competitive duels in squads since the very beginning, so he's been developing those crucial communication skills for the past two years. As of this point, his communication is magnificent. If any piece of information needs to be said, he's gonna bring it up and make sure everybody knows. Of course, you know, he's rather hyper with his callouts, which some might see as distracting, but honestly, we think those crazy callouts can actually help by instilling confidence and keeping his team hyped up. And you know how I am with confidence. Confidence is everything, that's right. Mongo also does a fantastic job of staying ready to help his team. When on the offensive, he plays off his teammates no matter what. Whether it's a split angle of attack or working side by side for structure control, Mongo remains on point. And it's not too often you're going to see him overextend or make a play that throws the game. No wonder his team dominated throughout the Season X Champion Series. Buka's no newbie when it comes to team-based gameplay either, okay? Although he didn't qualify for the World Cup duels, and Mongrel did, he's been showing us in the FNCS ever since that he can still dish out when it's more than just him. There are two significant differences in how Buga communicates over Mongrel. His tone and B, the volume of info. Buga will almost always stay calm and collected. It's impressive. Even in moments where things aren't going his way. Because the last thing he wants is to annoy and distract his teammates. And if he thinks they need a piece of info, he doesn't hesitate. We were watching a qualifier match where he died a little early, but it didn't stop him from contributing. He was still conveying important information left and right to his team and, you know, how they should rotate and where to watch out for enemies. You guys both are good. You guys both are good. We're in, we're in, we're in. Okay, okay. You have shield? Watch top, watch top, watch top, watch top. Give it up, give it up, give it up. That's tight. That's tight. Okay, okay. It plays max distance. Northeast, northeast. You guys can go to the right here. All the three. Watch out for trap, I saw trap in here earlier. Oh, I do have it. You need to drop, you need to drop. drop. This is all second ice. Nice. Focus on placement, Trev. Focus on placement. All in all, man, Booga and Mongrel both make excellent teammates. I'm sure most pros would jump at that chance to squad up with either of them. However, you know, we noticed that Booga has a slight tendency to sometimes to play situations like he's solo. He might overcommit to a flank or, you know, go a little too deep in a fight or get even separated from his team. Only to a minor extent, though. Because of that, as well as all the other factors, we're giving Mongrel eight points for team play and Booga seven. Our next category, ladies and gentlemen, is Game Sense. How bright are Mongrel and Booga when it comes to things like decision making? You know, the meta game and on the spot plays. In this area, you know, what Mongrel seems to excel at is staying on top of the meta. Whenever there's a new technique or play style, man, he's one of the trailblazers. Like, when people started doing the wall replay strat, where you put down some stairs and edit them for a better angle, you know, no one else pushed that strat into prominence more than Mongrel did. So much so that people even now call it the Mongrel Classic. Or how about ramp phasing into boxes? Around the time it was first discovered, the technique was barely known by anybody. But once Mongo used it to pick up kill after kill during the World Cup qualifiers, everyone in their neighbor was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna start doing that. If there's a technique out there that exists, Mongo knows it. He's always one of the first people to use them practically too, you know? Not only that, but his insane repertoire allows him to react and outplay opponents that try a fast one on him. Now when watching Booga play, it doesn't take long to watch this guy put his big brain to use. It seems like he's always pulling out some super creative move or just making a play that most players wouldn't even think of. Like in this clip right here, and I mean like right here, last season, all right, Booga squad knows the enemy that they're eyeing is setting up a ramp for a low launch pad. So he waits, ready to knock it out. Once the ramp is placed, he destroys it, and his team proceeds to laser this dude right out of the sky. Or this play right here. 
where he dropped someone off the island with a shockwave, <laughs> fighting on the edge of the map was pretty unusual. So this isn't just some move he's seen before that he could just recall. So many thoughts need to be processed right here. Like realizing they're over the water, that he has shockwave grenades, and that he can use one to drop his opponent for a free kill, although up on the spot. Now, these are sort of just flashy high IQ moves, but there's a lot more than that to Booga's game sense. At the highest level, like at the World Cup, his game sense won him more points than raw mechanics ever could. Knowing things like where to land, you know, like where to fight, and like even where to rotate were all such significant factors. This is another close one, guys. Real hard to decide on this one, but we're gonna give Mongo eight and Booga nine. Since he's just a tiny bit more consistent with his decision making, Booga's earning that extra point here. Lastly, we're going to talk about the clutch factor between the UK superstar and the North American champion. Who's better at pulling off those miraculous saves? If you looked up Mongo's clutching on YouTube, oh my god, there'd be hours of impressive footage you have to watch. We can't count how many times Mongo is left on his own endgame and somehow still manages to roll over everyone and win the match. It's almost like when there's added pressure, it just kicks him into overdrive. Of course, clutching is no easy task, my friends. For Mongo, you know, to be so capable at it, the level of focus he needs is unreal. I think, you know, for us, the most extraordinary moment most of us have seen was during the Week 10 Duo Qualifiers. By himself, man, Mongo was able to pick up nine limbs. It was just nuts. The way he singled out his opponents and took only the fight where he had the advantage is what separates Mongo from the rest of us. All right, so you're asking yourself, so what about Booga? Well, you can also consider him a clutch master as well. His quick thinking and his sane mechanics allow him to pull off some pretty nutty stuff, bro. Even in moments that should be outright impossible to survive, Booga's shown us time and time again that with enough skill, anything is winnable. If you need more proof that he can clutch, our favorite moment is when he won the October 3rd Champions Cash Cup. Booga's first seven games didn't really go too well. He got one pumped a few times, cycled by aggressive players, and even died off spawn in a couple of extremely unlucky ways. With eight matches remaining, most other players would stand no chance of placing in the money, let alone taking first place. Something must have got to Booga here. Maybe he just didn't want to be made a fool on stream, I really don't know. But something definitely clicked. Booga went on to win the next three matches with ease, guys. After that, he finished second and won. Then, a few games later, got another victory. When it was all said and done, Booga took first place with four wins, more than anyone else got in the tournament. Considering this insanely rocky start, my goodness, the way he turned things around showed his viewers he's still the best. All right, so, you know, it's just really hard to say who should get the crown here. You know, honestly, we think Mongra and Booga are both equal when it comes to clutching things up. So, we're going to give them both nine points here. All right, guys. So the moment you guys have been waiting on. So after telling up their points, we've got Mongo at 43 and we've got Booga at 44. Holy moly. That was a close matchup for sure, guys. But in our opinion, Booga's the better overall player by the tiniest margin. Again, you might disagree. So feel free to let us know your thoughts on the matter down below. All right, guys. A brand guys. new YouTube What's video. It? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys three things. Basically, every Fortnite player should be looking to get for Christmas. Basically, just to improve your gameplay. With, uh, obviously, Christmas is coming up. It is currently December the 9th as I am recording this video. Probably very close to this day or even the same day when you're watching this. And, you know, it's coming up to Christmas. You guys are either writing your Christmas list. So if that's something that you do. You may be just, like, messaging your parents on what you actually want for Christmas. Or maybe you're just getting money this Christmas and you're going out and buying, like, gifts yourself. But today, I am going to be assisting you guys if you are basically confused or lost on what to actually buy for christmas i'm actually going to give you guys some things in this video that you can actually get which will actually improve your gameplay and better you as a fortnite player and they're also like gifts like everything you get on christmas is a gift so i'm pretty sure none of you'll be paying for this stuff so you probably tell your parents what you want for christmas and they'll go out and buy you this yeah like christmas is the best time to get any peripherals or gaming things for your setup i'm basically just going to insist you guys in what to get if you do go ahead to enjoy the video you know what to do just drop a like subscribe post notifications on if you haven't already it means the world and yeah without further ado Let's get straight into it. She told me that it's all my fault. It would have been perfect all along. It would have been right and not another wrong. And it would be the happy, not a sad song. Okay guys, the first thing I'm going to discuss in this video that you guys should be getting for Christmas is if you currently have a 60 hertz monitor, which I guarantee 80% of you guys watching this video have a 60 hertz monitor. Actually, right now, comment down below what monitor you have. 
I don't actually want to know the model of your monitor. I just want to know how many hertz your monitor has. So basically what the refresh rate is. Just comment down below right now as I'm speaking. Just quickly comment what refresh rate your monitor is. So if it's 60 hertz, comment 60 hertz. If it's 144, comment 144 hertz. If it's 240 hertz, comment that down below. It'd be nice to know how many guys actually have 60 hertz. How many of you already have like things such as a 144, even a 240. I'm sure a lot of you have 60 hertz anyway because I'm, I'm just, I feel like that's just a lot of people in the community have that. But let me just tell you now, upgrading to 144 hertz is such a huge difference. It's almost like going from 30 FPS to 200 FPS. The difference is actually massive. If you're playing on a 60 hertz, you're virtually playing on 60 FPS. Sometimes it'll feel even worse than that, especially end game. And if you're playing on 144 hertz, you're virtually playing at around 144 FPS, which is huge difference. Going from 60 to 100 FPS is massive. And the fact that it's even 60 hertz, it's, it just it just doesn't feel like that. Even if you're using a 60 hertz and cap on 60 FPS, it still feels a lot worse. The difference upgrading to 144 hertz refresh rate monitor is like insane. Probably the best decision I made. And like I'm that used to using a 144 hertz monitor now. I even bought a second monitor, which I don't even game on. And I actually use that as 144 hertz as well. Just because it generally feels so much smoother and just better for the eyes to look at such monitor. 60 hertz now just feels a lot choppy and it's just, it's just not nice to play on. So yeah, the first thing you want to be putting on your Christmas list if you haven't already got one is a 144 hertz monitor. You get them as cheap as like $150, maybe even $100. You have to search around and find what basically is best. But what you got to remember, the more expensive ones is basically just based on their build quality. So the cheaper ones will have a weaker build quality and maybe just basically more vulnerable to break. And the colors and saturation on the screen will basically just be a little bit less vibrant and it just won't, the colors won't pop as much. There is a defect to buying a cheap 144 hertz monitor. I can recommend the Omen monitor. I don't know what exactly the model name is. This is by HP and it is a high definition display one, 1080p and it is 144 hertz. This was about $200 and it's generally just, a, it's generally just a great monitor. We'll leave some links down below probably to this monitor. So yeah, they are two I can recommend. But yeah, as I just said, like if you haven't got one yet, upgrading from a 60 hertz will be a very good thing to do for Christmas. Okay guys, and the next thing I'm going to talk about in this video would be your RAM. This is basically mainly just for PC players. I probably should have discussed that at the start of the video. Probably understood that when I actually talk about the 144 hertz monitor anyway. Because if you're on a console and not a PS4 Pro, 144 hertz monitor just won't matter because you are locked on 60 FPS. So just before you are on a console and do go out your way to try and buy a refresh rate monitor above 60, I wouldn't bother because it just isn't going to make a difference because console is basically just capped at 60 hertz. It's kind of annoying. That's why maybe even getting a PC for Christmas. I know it's on the upper side to things, but honestly, it could be a good investment or a good thing to buy as upgrading from 60 FPS is also a big thing you guys could do. But that's why I'm also talking about RAM. If you guys are on PC and currently use 8 gigabytes of RAM, that is actually not as good as you may think. You may even use 4 gigabytes which is actually quite frankly terrible in the nicest way possible if you guys use four gigabytes to eight gigabytes of ram it's just simply not enough for fortnite so for literally maybe 80 dollars you guys could upgrade to 16 gigabytes of ram anywhere from 16 gigabytes of ram to 32 gigabytes of ram is very good so you could buy i don't know maybe two sticks of eight gigabytes of ram which will basically just slot straight in it takes two seconds to install these you guys can watch tutorials on how to install ram into your pc it's literally so easy and anyone can do it you can literally learn to do it in 30 seconds because that's literally how long it takes to do so don't worry installing ram isn't like installing a processor it's very simple it should take 30 seconds. So you could be an amateur at building PCs or chaining your PC components and still install RAM. I did it myself and it was very easy. But upgrading from 8 gigabytes of RAM to 16 gigabytes is massive. It's literally doubling your RAM and your RAM speed. So it's actually really worth it. You can only really take my note for this and my word, but you guys can watch other videos and maybe watch some videos where people compare both 8 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of RAM. This almost doubled my FPS, and I I'm sure even from me now going to 16 gigabytes to the 32 gigabytes of RAM, that's just going to do the exact same. It's similar from going to 30 FPS to maybe 60 FPS, and it's also very similar to going from a 60 hertz monitor to a 144 hertz monitor. The difference is huge, and it's really worth in, like just getting. So that's one thing you guys really need to get for Christmas, and that is 16 gigabytes of RAM, or maybe even 32 if you want to go on the upper half to benefit your FPS even more if you haven't already got anywhere above 8 gigabytes of RAM. So that's just something else you guys could do. It's kind of, I would say kind of cheap, not expensive and really does help your FPS and better your performance, which will then better how you play in game. So it is worth it. It's about $80 you can probably find some RAM for. And then the final thing I'm going to be talking about is glasses, gaming glasses in particular. If you guys know a streamer called Clicks and also a pro player, you guys probably all know him. He actually does wear these glasses. I will try and throw a photo on screen right now 
now of him wearing these glasses. These are Clix's gaming glasses, and they are by a company called Gunner Gaming or something along them lines. I do have these glasses myself, which I did buy. You can get these glasses from anywhere from even $20 to even $80, depending on which ones you get. But they all do the same effect. It's basically just what style of glasses you want and how comfortable you want them. So basically what you're paying for is comfort. You guys can get these on Amazon or anything like that. I will throw photos on screen of them, like what they look like. These ones in particular are the ones that Clix has, and they're probably about $50. They have like a yellow tint to them, which basically is better for your eyes. You don't get a blue UV light, so it can actually help you go to sleep at night. There's a blue UV light on screens, such as monitors, can actually affect you and affect your vision. And not only that, it can actually just make you stay awake longer at night. That's why you are advised not to go on any like device, iPhone, or even go on a computer an hour before you go to sleep because it can affect your sleep. So I don't know if that's something you care about, you may want to get these glasses for that. Or if you just do generally have bad eyesight and basic gaming is hurting your eyes or straining your eyes after a few hours and you do want a game for a long period, these are good things to buy. That's the reason I bought them. But they also do help you concentrate a lot. Clix even says himself when he wears his glasses, he, it means he's in his concentration zone and he can basically kill people better. He's more focused and that's exactly what these glasses do. They help me focus. I'm not sure if it's actually any sort of placebo. They do help a lot. So if you guys do want to buy these glasses to help focus, this is something you can do. They're not that expensive and it's just a little, if it's just something extra you guys want to get for Christmas, pretty good to add to your list right now. It can help your performance and definitely helps mine. So I thought I'd just throw this in the video. I didn't really know to put as a third tip as after you've really upgraded your monitors and RAM, there's not much more besides other PC components, maybe your peripherals, such as your keyboard and mouse. That kind of comes without saying. And I've heard no one really speak about these glasses yet. So yeah, this is a great thing you guys could add to your Christmas list. But yeah, guys, that's about it for the video. There's not really much more to it. I want to make this quick video, give you guys some little things and help if you are struggling and want to get for Christmas and do want something that will better your performance as a Fortnite player. If you guys did enjoy the video, you know what to do. Drop a like, subscribe, post notifications on so you never miss an upload just like this. Sorry for yesterday's video. It was kind of jumbled and messed up. I will make an update video and update you guys on some more things I have found out about Winter Real. But yeah guys. Yo, what is up boys and girls? Today I am bringing you a quick setting video again. It's kind of weird how people keep asking me every single video for my settings. When I already have like three settings videos. Like sometimes I'll make a settings video and then in that settings video in the comments people will say what are your settings but uh i'm gonna i'm just gonna start making a settings video every time i get a bunch of comments like that because uh, there's a lot of people that, that only look for the settings in the newest videos because they don't they don't want to see old settings they want to see new settings so i'm just gonna do one every like i don't know every time i start getting comments for that also somebody said can you please do a tutorial on how to build a turtle bro if you call my blastoise a turtle one more time that is not a turtle well i don't know technically he might be a turtle but he's a blastoise bro if you don't know who blastoise is you have to go watch all 27 seasons of pokemon right now or however many they have and uh yeah all right so here's my settings okay so sometimes in some videos my dead zone is 10 percent. sometimes it's nine percent honestly i still don't know which one's better like i feel like i play so good on both some days and some days i just play so bad on both like some days i'll be doing bad so i'll move it up to 10 and i'll do good some days i'll be doing bad on 10 and i'll move back down to nine so i don't know if it's just a placebo effect but it's just weird how much of a difference it can make like on an off day so right now i'm on 10 but if i start doing bad i'll just go back to nine and i just i just keep fluctuating between both of these built sensitivity 2.0 edit 2.7 a lot of people ask me how do you uh edit on such a high edit sensitivity honestly i don't know i just uh the control freaks obviously help but i've always wanted a really high sensitivity for edits obviously use the bands options on 57 percent horizontal 55 vertical zero percent zero percent zero seconds off 14 percent horizontal 14 percent vertical zero percent zero percent zero percent zero percent linear 100 percent off off doesn't matter doesn't matter so that's my uh, settings again. It's actually kind of crazy how many people have said they copied my settings and their aim got a lot better. Because usually I would tell people don't ever copy people's settings because it's uh, not a good idea. Just because uh, somebody's sensitivity is good for them doesn't mean it'll be good for you too. But uh, it's it, I've literally had hundreds of people tell me that uh, that they copied my settings and now they're beaming people. So maybe, I don't know, maybe my settings are a good, like, uh, a good place to start off on. Because they are very average settings. They're very like right in the middle. So maybe that's why people people are liking them just i recommend if you do copy them at least try tweaking them a little bit up and down just because you're doing better with my sensitivity there might be another sensitivity that you'd be even better with so that's why it's important to always be tweaking it little by little trying new things you know but uh yeah that's my sensitivity video now here is a solo game play from earlier i got on i played one solo match i won and then i got off literally crack bro don't forget to use code brock in the item shop
that isn't the best loot you can get off spawn, I don't know, bro. Smash that like button and you'll get loot like that. Damn, please peek. Oh my god, please stand still. Please stand still. Oh, let me get a triple headshot right here. Please stand still. Let me get that triple headshot. shot. Evan the chat for that guy, bro. He's mad. And that guy. Damn, you guys just got in school, bro. He's mad. These are some clean kills, bro. On fire, baby.
What the f No way! There's no way, bro. See what happens, guys, when you overbuild. What the f I got random ads or what? GG boys, easy clap. Y'all already know.